Okay, uh, my name's Scott Fitzgerald. I'm a technical designer for Crytek in the engine licensing team. Uh, what we do uh, is uh, show off the GDC uh, technology at GDC and also do the training for licensees. Uh, so what we'll be showing you now is the uh, technology that we developed for Crisis 3 that's now coming over uh, to the uh, SDK which all the licensees and also the free SDK comes from. So um, I'll jump in and get started. Cool, so the first thing we're going to have a look at is or this level that we're using for a demonstration is fields from Crisis 3. And the first thing we're going to look at is uh, area lights. Um, this is uh, a new way for uh, lights to be rendered inside the scene. Because generally what you have with the original uh, point light source is that the light actually comes from like an infinitely small point light. So uh, this is uh, it's pretty good for most situations. But sometimes if you imagine like a TV monitor where you have uh, the, the light's going to be coming from like a volume or uh, from the entire screen rather than a point light source. This is where we've uh, developed the area light stuff for. So, uh, all it is is just an extension to our standard light entity. So if we just turn this on now and we bring this up. Now we're actually casting the light from a plane rather than the actual an individual point light source. So if we turn this on you can actually see we have uh, uh, quite a lot of control over how we actually uh, use this stuff so we can make it nice and small and the idea of this is to uh, be able to make a, a light shape that will actually fit the particular light source it's coming from so if you imagine these um, uh, fluorescent light tubes uh, rather than coming from a point source we're coming in from the entire length of the uh, the object itself so it makes it a little bit more believable when you come to the uh, uh, to casting light in the scene so a very nice little feature that we can play around with. We can also like uh, use texture projection on it as well. Uh, very, uh, very versatile uh, little extension to the light system. Now, is everything in here in real time? Yep, this is all real time. So at any point uh, during the game, we can just jump in, and the whole game will update and run around, and you can uh, shoot everything, and uh, all the interaction and the physics is all working quite nicely. Uh, which I'll get back to the grass stuff in a second, but one of the uh, well, the next thing I can show you now is um, a new type of um, uh, rendering. It's like an alternative to tessellation. Uh, so what we have is or the best way to show it. I'll just make a new. Uh, let's bring in one of the objects. Okay, so just with the uh, vegetation system that we've added in, um, that's also had a bit of a nice uh, update into the way the vegetation system works. So now there's a lot more um, connection between the physics system and also the uh, vegetation, all the other little subsystems that are inside the uh, cryengine. Uh, but what we have here is uh, our new technology called PADM. Uh, and this is um, basically like an extension to the uh, parallax illusion mapping. So uh, let's open up the material editor and just grab the material from this. So in this window here, we have um, the control over the, the materials and how they're actually rendered inside the world. Uh, so if we uh, concentrate on this tree here, if we just turn off this new technology, we notice it's uh, just gone down to its basic um, like form that you would get out of uh, Studio Max or anything like this. So. Uh, once we enable this, you can say there's uh, pretty much a, a huge amount of detail has gone into the actual objects. And this is like an alternative to uh, hardware-based tessellation, which comes in DirectX 11. Uh, this is a little bit more, um, uh, like I say, computer-friendly system of, uh, of uh, adding the extra detail into the, uh, into the environment. So we also have like quite a lot of control to do with how how much this actually affects the objects that we're playing with, so we can increase this up and down, and you can see how much it actually like blows out the um, uh, the shape of the object. And uh, the closer you get, you can see this just uh, quite a lot of uh, detail now actually inside the vegetation stuff. Another example of this would be the uh, the buggy from Crisis Three. So if I just quickly throw one of these into the level. So if we have a look here, the tires are actually using this system as well. So if we get a little bit closer. So 
So once again, if we just grab this material. Now, can you go into a little bit of detail what kind of rig you're on to do this in real time? Uh, this is pretty much, uh, I'd say, just a slightly above average PC, nothing too extreme. It's, uh, I don't know off the top of my heart, but I say it's probably something like an i7. Uh, it's running a AM, AMD card, a uh, video card. So, um, yeah, they think the, the whole point is we, we try and make our engine very scalable. So, obviously, all this new technology is, is obviously quite a lot of it's DirectX 11 only. So, um, older video cards are not really going to be able to spoil the new stuff. But obviously, we, we plow a lot of our technology into the latest equipment so it comes out. But the, the really nice thing about the Cry Engine is that we have. Uh, Config specs, you can test uh, how your actually game's running, or depending on uh, whether you have the high end system, a reasonably good system, medium low, and then also you can simulate Xbox or PS3 uh, all from within the editor, and you can all jump in game and test everything out at the same time. So uh, it really does um, reduce the uh, man hours involved in actually uh, producing a game where you're having to constantly test and adjust. Now in the Sakura so it's just you build it once and um, just deploy it to all platforms and everything's all balanced out and all work perfectly for uh, for every situation. So uh, yeah, so once again, so just quickly looking at this uh, uh, material here, if we just have a quick look at the tires, once again we can like seriously increase the depth of the the effect that's actually kicking into the tires and the nice thing as well it actually gives you a nice defined edge rather than a standard um, just a flat uh, thing so if we just turn this off completely um, you can see how much actually depth gets added into the materials themselves uh, which is really cool so 